I wonder what my new shop tool could be. Could it be a new table saw, a new band saw, a new planer? Probably not a planer. Well, I guess it could be if it was really large. Well, it's a new wood lathe. It's the JWL 1640 EVS by Jet. And I'd also like to give a shout out thank you again to the truck driver for bringing the lathe into my garage for me. I have been wanting a full-size lathe for a few years now, and this one did not disappoint. It is really nice, high quality, and it was heavy, coming at a gross weight of 440 pounds, or about 200 kilograms, with the lathe being around 400 pounds, about 180 kilograms. And because my shop is in my basement, which has pluses and it has minuses and this is one of the minuses of getting things down there i had to take the lathe piece by piece and the lathe was well lubricated with packing grease so i tried to leave the plastic on wherever i could so the grease didn't get everywhere The entire assembly was quite easy, didn't take a lot of time, and I had no issues. Other than I was stupidly wearing sandals that I forgot about, but luckily nothing happened. It did take me about 10 minutes to level the lathe out, but that was due to my shop floor. I used some paper towels to clean the bulk of the grease off, but came back later with a degreaser. You can also use mineral spirits, but either way, I don't get anything on the paint. I also lubricated all of the parts with a dry spray lubrication, and then came back with a couple of coats of paste wax. Okay, so the banjo seems similar to the Powermatic banjos to me. This one has a cam lock on it, which is really nice to not mar the one inch tool rest posts. As for the accessories, it came with a nice draw bar, a wrench for the face plate, which has locking set screws for reverse. A nice steel accessory shelf was included, but I probably will hang that on the wall behind me. It came with an extremely sharp four-prong spur drive center and two live centers, one cup and one cone, which the cone center has a center pin that goes into a hole and then you can actually remove the cone. And as you can see, the lathe does have a sliding headstock, but no longer has a 360 degree spinning headstock. They did away with it. It's a 230 volt motor, three phase, one and a half horsepower with an enclosed inverter. The spindle has three bearings in it, two in the front and one on the back, which is really nice, adds a lot of stability to the spindle. There is forward and reverse, along with variable speed from 40 to 3200. It runs so quiet, even at some of the higher speeds. Door is magnetic, really nice. And as you can see, it gives you the ranges of the low and the high. I'm pretty much gonna leave it on high most of the time from 100 to 3200. And I don't know if you can see these, but you see all the numbers in here. It has indexing built in. 36 positions with a spring-loaded locking pin. Which brings me to my only possible concern with this lathe is that 
Your fingers might get caught in between the handle and the locking pin at some point. But there is enough room on the front of the handle. I just got to keep that in mind that that pin's there. A feature I really liked was the spindle lock. You can push the pin in, slide the cover down, and it locks it in place, and you have both hands free to either get off a stuck chuck or a faceplate or something. Then you just slide it back up, and you're good to go. It has a nice paddle switch with a safety feature for kids, and a rubber tool mat up top. It does have a 16 and a half swing over the bed, 12 and 3 quarters over the banjo, 40 inches between centers, and I do have a bed extension coming, which will give me 60 inches between centers and give me an additional 18 inches for outboard turning, totaling 34 and a half inches approximately in diameter, plenty. The tailstock, like the rest of the lathe, is cast iron. It has an anti-rotation locking wedge, a four and a quarter quill travel, which is smooth moving, and the tailstock is solid and locks down solid. We'll check out the alignment. Nice. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough on my new addition to the shop. I do want to do a few more things to the lathe before I actually try it out. As in installing its own outlet and shutoff switch. And I need to make room for the extension bed coming and the outboard turning, so I gotta move these sanders. I also wanna relocate my air filtration, but keep it near the lathe. And I need to figure out some sort of a mount system for my dust collector near the lathe. I gotta rework my pegboards. All my lathe tools are gonna come over here behind me because I never really liked having to reach over the lathe to get my tools. So this is another reason why I had put this in the middle of my shop where I can just turn around and get my lathe tools behind me. And I have worked with other jet lathes before. I liked them. I've never had problems. I do own other jet equipment like my dust collector and never had any issues. Another one of the main reasons why I went with this lathe is the really nice five-year warranty. I did look at several other brands in this kind of price range and I didn't want to spend a crazy amount of money but I did kind of want to upgrade to a larger lathe. And as always, stay safe in your shop at all times. Take care and thank you. Mm -hmm.